Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're welcome to this particular captivating YouTube video where we delve into the intricate political journey of former South African President Jacob Zuma. Before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button and kindly turn on the bell notification button so you never miss any of our videos. Of course, let's get started. Well, in March, a stunning twist occurred in South Africa's political landscape. While the country's electoral commission initially barred Jacob Zuma, the former president, from running as a parliamentary candidate in the upcoming general elections. While this decision was due to a previous criminal conviction that rendered Zuma ineligible under the law. However, just days later, the electoral court overturned the commission's ruling, declaring Jacob Zuma eligible to run. This turn of events likely left the governing African National Congress dismayed because they did not see this coming because they were already so certain that there was no way that Jacob Zuma could be brought back as a candidate. While well, this recent development is just one of the many twists in the long and controversial political career of this particular 82-year-old Jacob Zuma. Well, despite leading the ANC for years and serving as South Africa's president twice, Jacob Zuma now finds himself running against his former party under the band of MK Party. Well, this election is poised to be the most closely contested since the country's first democratic vote 30 years ago. While well, Zuma's emergence as a challenger to President Ramaphosa's bid for a second term did not come as a surprise to analysts. Since 2005, Zuma has faced a barrage of court trials and of course political scandals that would have toppled many politicians. However, he has managed to bounce back each and every time, thanks in part to his grassroots approach which he has been using which has helped him to maintain a loyal follower base. Well, Ongama Ntinka, who happens to be a politics and of course a history lecturer at Nelson Mandela University, aptly describes Zuma's journey as, in his own words, he says something like, Zuma has had the most ferocious wrestle with the judicial and political institutions in South Africa. There is no politician in the country that has presented a test of pass on the separation of pass like him. These issues prove that the conduct of political power is limited by the rule of law. Well, that's exactly what he said. And of course, we are yet to examine what he actually said. Now, let's take a closer look at the main scandals, legal challenges, and of course, not leaving behind the criminal allegations that have plagued Jacob Zuma over the past two decades. Well, in 2005, while serving as South Africa's deputy president, Jacob Zuma became entangled in corruption allegations. While he was implicated in bribe payments received from a close associate who was called Shabi Shaikh. Well, Shaikh was later convicted on corruption and fraud charges for soliciting bribes on Zuma's behalf from a French arms company in 1999. Zuma was also accused of having carnal knowledge the same year while he did this with a young lady that was still to get into. Well, a charge he was acquitted of in 2006 after a highly publicized trial. These events marked the beginning of a series of legal battles and controversies that would follow Zuma throughout his political career. While Jacob Zuma's rise to power within the ANC came in 2007 when he won the party's leadership at its regular five-year conference. While this victory came despite the cloud of corruption and of course all these allegations hanging over him, his victory over Thabo Mbeki, who had sacked him as deputy president, effectively split the ANC in two. While well, as President Zuma faced further challenges, this is how everything became so turned around for him. 
One of the most significant controversies was the alleged state capture by the Gupta family, a wealthy business family with close ties to Jacob Zuma. Well, between the years of 2013 and 2017, reports emerged of the Guptas using their influence to secure multi-billion dollar contracts and install friendly faces in government positions. These revelations sparked public outrage and protests with many demanding that the Gupta influence be dismantled and of course maybe any person that they had somehow put in the government should be removed. Well, in February 2018, under mounting pressure from the ANC, Jacob Zuma resigned as South Africa's president. Well, his re resignation came shortly after the police raided the Johannesburg home of the Guptas. President Sri Maposa assumed office in his place and directed a commission of inquiry known as a Zondo Commission to investigate the allegations of state capture. Well, despite his resignation, Zuma's legal troubles continued. In June 2021, he was found guilty of contempt of court for refusing to provide testimony at the Zondo Commission, where the Constitutional Court sentenced him to 15 months imprisonment. His arrest sparked violent protests in his home province of the KwaZulu Natal, resulting in widespread destruction and loss of life. Well, in a surprising turn of events, Zuma was released from prison after serving only two months on held grounds. Well, this move was seen by some as an attempt to appease his supporters. However, in December, in December that same year, uh, a judge ruled that Zuma's release was unlawful and he was ordered to return back to prison. While well, in 2022 and 2023, Zuma's legal battles continued as courts ruled his early medical parole to be unlawful. While well, he was briefly imprisoned again, but he was immediately released under government amnesty program aimed at alleviating overcrowding in jails. Critics accused President Ramaphosa of engineering the release. I mean, at that time, most people felt like he was trying to like, I don't know, maybe make this man feel good or make this man be on his side if he should leave prison. But on the contrary, he decided to form his own political party, which was at that time still known as the MK party. Well, most people feel like even though Ramaphosa gave this man amnesty and according to them, they made it look like it's because there was overcrowding in jail, it was just a tactic to make this man to leave prison and maybe hopefully support him in the forthcoming elections. Well, as we enter 2024, the political landscape in South Africa remains volatile and of course uncertain, with Jacob Zuma's return to politics adding a new layer of complexity. While his decision to run as a parliamentary candidate has injected further tension into an already fierce contested election, while well, the outcome of these elections will undoubtedly shape the future trajectory of South African politics. In conclusion, Jacob Zuma's political journey has been marked by controversy, legal battles, and of course a resilient ability to maintain a loyal supporter base. While well, his return to the political arena adds a captivating twist to South Africa's political landscape and the upcoming elections will determine the direction the country takes in the years to come. So I don't know about you guys, are you rooting for Jacob Zuma? Are you supporting the MK party? Leave your thoughts in the comment section and please do not forget to subscribe and do turn on the bell notification button so you can be the first to get notified when we drop a new clip. Until the next video drops by, stay tuned and stay glued.